Good morning, everybody. I hope that you're having a fantastic day today. And I want to talk about herbs and growing herbs and how to use them and kind of just a brief basic thing. I don't want to go too deep because I could talk about this forever. But first and foremost, it's really important when you start working with herbs to understand the difference between a common name and the scientific name. Now, this might seem really straightforward. But when we start talking about common names, you're going to end up with a lot of plants that actually use the same common name that have nothing to do with each other. They normally get the common name because they look similar. Maybe they have both have purple flowers or maybe they're similar from Europe to America. Um, but just because a plant kind of looks similar does not mean that it's the same. And this will really affect what you're doing. Um, so to... Just be mindful when you start picking up herbs that have common names, um, that there are a lot of herbs that just have really common names, like sage. You're gonna see sage on lots of different types of plants, but a true sage is gonna be named a salvia, S-A-L-V-I-A, -A, and it'll have that in its Latin name. There's a lot of sages that are also in the Artemisia, Artemis family, I just call it. I'm sure that's not how you say it, but it makes sense because that's the goddess's name. Um, and that's when you're going to get like your Arctic sage and your lighter sages. Um, I'm pretty sure that lavender is one of those. I could be totally wrong on the lavender, but anyways. So look at your Latin names and know the difference because it is going to change things. And it might not matter with all plants, um, but some of them it is really going to matter with. So when you're buying plants or herbs or looking at magical properties, make sure that you're looking at the right plant. Uh, so know the scientific name, know the common name, and also know that if your common name has, you know, lots of other plants that are also called that. Uh, so just be aware of that as you start working with it. Uh, the next thing is, and really important thing, is the difference between magical and medicinal herb use. Uh, so this is really, really important with that first thing that I just talked about and the, um, knowing the difference between your herbs because magically you can use a lot of things interchangeably because they have the same kind of magical energy. If you're looking for protection, any kind of plant that has thorns is going to be great for protection because that's what it does. Uh, but they're not all going to have the same magical use because, or medicinal use because they're going to have different chemicals in them. Um, plant, different plant plant chemicals, um, and that's what makes the plant medicinal. Um, so if you're looking like a real obvious one with the marijuana and the cannabinoids and the THC, it's those phytochemicals that are doing the work in the plant. Um, if we look at like belladonnas or some of the other plants that are in the belladonnas family, they have an alkaloid in them that um, is it affects your heart and your brain. Um, and so there are a lot, I mean, all plants have phytochemicals in them. These are the chemicals in the plant that help the plant protect itself from nature. And in doing so, they also affect the human body. So the, you know, the chemical in mushrooms, the, even like the anti-inflammatory properties of a uh, pineapple. These are all the phytochemicals and those phytochemicals are specific to the scientific plant. So if you think about sage, uh, the sage salvia plants have been scientifically tested and shown to be antimicrobial and the smoke is antibacterial. Um, and so the smoke itself kills bacteria. Now, I don't know if they've ever tested things like sagebrush or arctic sage or some of the other Artemis versions of the plant. I imagine that when the scientists did the test, they used true salvia, which is that garden sage that is so popular. Uh, I think that white sage has also been done, but again, that's a salvia, and so um, you just need to know what it is, and especially if you're going to be trying to use plants medicinally. Now, I always recommend that you talk to your doctor, you talk to a naturopath, you talk to a professional. Don't just pick up a book and be like, oh, mint is a... Uh, mint can calm your stomach. Yes, some books will say that mint can cause, calm your stomach, but enough mint, it'll actually make you throw up. So it just depends on your dosage and your use and whatever it may be. Um, so you need to talk to somebody who is experienced. I would not recommend going out and being like, oh, I have diabetes, I'm going to start treating it with these herbs. 
ask a professional. Send me a message. I will help you. Please just don't diagnose and help yourself. You, it's always better to find a professional. Um, now, when we're talking about like chamomile and we're talking about relaxing herbs or herbs that are, uh, you know, going to help you when you have a cold or ginger, which helps your stomach. Uh, now these are things that you probably don't need to go see a doctor for. But like I said, if you're going to try to start treating your diabetes or some other chronic condition, you've got back pain, you want to start putting something on it, make sure that you talk to a professional and get that advice that you need. So that way you get the right thing. Um, there are some great Chinese medicine doctors out there that can really help if you're looking for a very much allopathic or alternative to the allopathic medicine. Um, and so there are other options. There are professionals out there who can really help. There are lots of medicine doctors and all of that stuff. Um, and so, like I said, ask. But, so, know what you're working with. Know the difference between magical and medicinal uses. So, when we start talking about, you know, you'll see a lot, like, herbs that were used to treat um, stomach problems or whatever. Um, I mean, people have been using herbs forever. So, a lot of the herbs have ancient uses that they've been used for for a really long time and these are the things that you'll see in books and that they'll talk about but it's important that you are mindful and you just ask or do more research or ask I mean it's really there's always somebody out there you can ask me uh, anyways so now when it comes to using your herbs magically now, this is different than medicinally, because again, when we're talking about medicinally, we're talking about the phytochemicals and the different parts of the herbs that are actually doing these things. Now, when we go to magically, it's a whole different ballgame, because now we're not talking about the phytochemicals, we're talking about the energies of the plant. And the best way to bond with the energies of a plant are to grow that plant, and to start with it from the beginning, and to see how much water it likes, and to know how much sun it likes, and to see if it has a smell or no smell, or you got to do it this way, whatever it is, it's to really bond with that plant and that energy, and then you'll begin to understand it. And the more plants that you grow and work with, the more that you'll understand that energy. Um, you know, I recommend growing things like basil. It's really easy. It's a great place to start. It's a good prosperity herb. Everybody loves prosperity. Um, and basil is beautiful. It's easy and you can eat it. Um, and it grows really well in the window. So that's always a good one to start with. Mint is another one that's really good to start with. Um, I love my spearmint. The fairies love the spearmint. My kids love the spearmint. It's just fun to grow. Uh, and it grows like... you. It's noxious. It will take over. I have... A barrier around my mint like a little triangle barrier of you know wood it's the same thing I've got back here you can kind of see in the background um, and the mint doesn't care it goes around it and over it and under it and all over it doesn't care so mint is a great place to start it grows really well uh, I would not start by growing something really hard to grow lavender is actually pretty hard to grow Unless you're in the right climates or whatever, it can be difficult. I mean, for 10 years, I've tried to grow lavender. Last year was the first year that I actually got lavender to stick. I bought a $20 lavender plant that was very well established, and I think that's the only reason I'm having success with it. Uh, so it just kind of depends. Just know, you know, some plants are way more difficult than others to grow, so don't be discouraged if you go out and you pick an orchid. Again, they're really hard to grow. They're very finicky. They want it just a certain way. And, and once you get that down, they're easy peasy. But you have to figure that out and bond and connect. And so plants like basil, your herbs, your countertop herbs, those things are going to be way easier to connect with and bond with. And, uh, you know, or maybe look into what your ancestors grew. Um, of Irish and Scottish descent, we ate a lot of potatoes. I can see right here in the background, those are mostly potatoes. <laughs> so, you just got to know what works for you and what you like to grow, but grow it, bond with it, be with it, spend time with it, even if it's just in your window, and this will really help you connect with that energy. And then, understand the energy. So, like I said earlier, if you're talking about protection, plants with thorns typically are used for protective magic and that's because the thorn is a symbol of protection this is something that it protects itself and this is where those magical attributes start to come into play so 
Same thing with like onions and garlic. We talk about how they're used for protection and repelling people. Well, that's because they have a very, very strong smell and they're spicy and they're like, ooh, stay away from me. Um, spicy foods are energizing. They get your blood moving. So they are, they'll add power to your spell. Um, plants that only bloom at night are calming and are, you know, more connected to the moon. Morning glories have that good blend of feminine and masculine energy because they only bloom in the morning, but they love the sun, so they go away when it gets dark. So there's just a lot of different things Mama, that you Mama. can, oh, pause this, I'll be right back. Sorry about that, you know, them kiddos, they get hungry. Anyways, so, uh, when you're talking about the different magical properties, really start to look into <clears throat> what that plant does in nature, how it lives in nature, where it lives in nature, uh, you know, daffodils, are their Latin name is, nar is named after the god Narcissus because they are heavy and they lean down over the water and they look at themselves in the water. Um, and so the legend goes that Narcissus was looking into the water and he loved himself so much that they turned him into the flower daffodil so that he could look into the water. So daffodils are a... I mean, they have to do with reflection, they have to do with loving yourself, and all of those kind of things. And so, but that's just based off of the way that it actually grows. And that these are, re like, you know, you always see prosperity and fertility and protection on all of the herbs. And just be mindful as you see this, that that might not necessarily be, you know, their true thing that just is something that's thrown on there because everybody likes prosperity and everybody likes protection but start to look at how the herb grows and how it lives and what it does in nature and <laughs> my dog I hope you're not in my garden okay in the camera it looked like he's peeing in my garden we have a battle going on anyways so just know how it grows know how to treat it you know how it treats itself how it treats the world around it and nature uh, so some plants, you know, peas are associated with love and connections because they reach out and they connect and they hold on to things and they do that in themselves. Like that's just part of the peas nature. Uh, pumpkins spread their energy out and they send it out far reaching. That's why pumpkins add energy to your spell is because they are far reaching. But if you've ever stuck your hand into a pumpkin plant, it's full of these horrible little tiny itchy thorns. So it also has that sense of protection. So it, you just got to kind of spend that time with the plant and know what it does. And <laughs> the dog in the background, let's give him some privacy. Anyways, so it looks like my morning is getting a little crazy. And I think that it's probably about time to finish up. So, um, you know, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm always available. I try to be always available. You can find me on Facebook and Twitter. Or you can ask questions right here on YouTube. Um, things are growing. Soon I'll have a website again. We're just getting things going after my whole transition and moving forward and kind of learning where I want to be in my life and finding my own healthy place. So, random tangent there. Anyways, I hope everybody is having a great Tuesday. I hope that you are growing herbs in your home and that you have good luck. If you have any questions, please let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and all of that great stuff. And I hope that you have a great day. Bless it be.